Hello. Uh, today we are talking about the uh, market for the Internet of Things, or more commonly known as IoT. Welcome, Stefan. Stefan is the author of our latest research in this area. Um, first of all, can I ask you for a definition of IoT? It's a buzzword, but what does it include? So the way that we see IoT um, is essentially um, where one puts a, takes a physical object, gives it a digital identity, but it goes beyond that. It's about um, the data that that device produces, how that data is used in terms of bringing business value, opening new revenue channels, bringing efficiency or cost savings, for example. So give us an example of how IoT would work in maybe a consumer environment. It could mean anything from connecting a hairbrush or a toothbrush to your set-top box or your connected TV, um, or even devices in the, in the so-called smart home, or bringing connectivity to, to your vehicle for insurance purposes, for example. I remember seeing a connected mirror and a connected toilet. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so it's getting everywhere. What about other markets like industrial? That's been around for a while, hasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the industrial market is really where um, IoT uh, began. It really started off with uh, SCADA moving on towards M2M and now moving towards IoT. Uh, really the difference is um, the level of, of networking that, that's going on. So SCADA and M2M are traditionally uh, revolved around closed loop networks. Okay. Um, now it's about bringing not only those connected devices but also bringing in uh, a link to the corporate IT environment. So there's a huge level of, of networking that's, that's going on now. Do you find that the same players operate in each sector or is, is, a, is there a um, differences? When we looked at the, the IOTs around three years ago, from a platform perspective, it was a very competitive uh, market. So you had some between 300 and 400 platform vendors, for example. Now that's becoming very much a consolidated space where you've got big players like IBM, Microsoft uh, and Bosch uh, really beginning to uh, dominate the space. Really? Okay. Uh, on the other hand, uh, because of this uh, move on the industrial side towards IoT, you have uh, platform providers who have traditionally been on the operations technology side. So the Siemens of the world, Schneider Electric uh, and so on. And they're also beginning to, to compete for... Uh, oh really? Uh, Moving? Exactly. The so these two okay. worlds, the corporate world, the yeah. IT world yeah. and the operations uh, technology world are beginning to, uh, to sort of intertwine um, and at the same time uh, an emerging uh, trend of edge computing is, is coming into play. So when we look at how devices were managed before, uh, or more recently so shall we say, um, you would connect a device and you would manage it through the cloud. Yeah. Uh, you would take the data, analyze it retrospectively in the cloud. Uh, that's fine for some business use cases, uh, but really to realize the full value of the IoT, it needs to be more real-time, uh, it needs to be reactive. And for that, you need to bring services much closer to where the data is originating. Is that due to latency or is, is in that? In some cases it's latency. Mm. Uh, it's also a question of how quickly can you automate processes. Okay. One of the huge trends that we've seen this year is uh, bringing intelligence into devices, whether that's uh, just a, for example, the iPhone 10 has AI yeah. embedded, yeah. Um, or it could be a, an industrial device which has uh, additional computing power to understand the data and act upon it, for example. There's a few things when you look at the IoT market that, that spring to mind. And the first one is security. Uh, you know, it, is that logical? Or is, that, is that acceptable as a, as a big issue? This is one of the main themes that we've looked at in the, in the research. And again, there's a, there's a clash of worlds here. Um, on the consumer side, uh, security is not seen as a high priority because security for, uh, for the vendor is expensive. Um, on the uh, in enterprise and the industrial side, there is a realization that it's a fundamental importance because essentially if you have poor security, you risk losing your data. Um, in the case of the general data protection regulation that's come into force this year, you risk huge fines yeah, should absolutely. personal data be, yeah. be released. And on the other hand, there's also a question of um, whether the data is manipulated and that could really disrupt business processes. Um, so what we're seeing is a lot of activity on the industrial and enterprise side to, to manage those problems. Um, 
in terms of bringing security into the device hardware itself, uh, bringing lifecycle management uh, into, uh, into the process, uh, and really ensuring that security is managed from an end-to-end -end perspective. Um, on the consumer side of things, it, a lot of the time it's seen as a low risk um, and therefore is added on as an afterthought. But I guess if there's cameras involved and things, then it gets, gets a bit more Absolutely. tricky. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, we foresee the, the market for cybersecurity growing uh, it's something like 300% over the next five years. It's not going to be driven only by companies themselves, uh, but we also believe that legislation is going to come into it particularly for so-called high-risk devices. So for example, a smart meter in your home would be viewed as critical infrastructure, must be secured, um, and eventually that will mean that there will be some kind of uh, regulation from the authority to say these are the minimum requirements for these types of devices. Okay, okay. Turning to the money, um, the business model for industrials, okay, you can understand that, for office you can understand that, consumer, would people be prepared to pay for IoT, or unless it's part of a bundle? Maybe? This is the mismatch that's going on right now, uh, and this is one of the reasons why there is issues with implementing security properly on the security side. At the moment, you have um, a consumer hardware device that's sold on a transactional basis to, to the end user. So there, the, the vendors are only getting revenue once. Um, but at the same time, they're expected to um, manage the software attached to the device, keep it up to date. Obviously this costs money um, and for, for many vendors this is not a viable business model. Um, in order for it to work you have to transition to something like a, a subscription based model. But that will ultimately mean that some devices which have connectivity right now they simply won't in future. The Internet of Payments mm has -hmm. become a bit of a buzzword as well recently. How does that fit in? That's a huge trend as well at the moment. Um, it's certainly a, a question that we believe will take some years to develop, uh, at least on the enterprise or industrial side. Um, I mean, right now on the consumer side, you could see that smartphones, PCs, they're quite well established yeah. as, as payment devices. Right now, I mean, you, you could potentially have something like your smart meter being responsible for bill payments, energy bill payments in the future. And that could be very convenient to, to the consumer, but at, at the moment there is no um, widespread mechanism for keeping these devices updated. Um, and at the same time, there's no ecosystem having been developed for um, security of transactions. Um, and this is where something like uh, blockchain or distributed ledger technology can come in to, to manage the security of that. But that's at least three to four li uh, years down the line. We've seen some trials going on in the US and Australia, but inevitably it will be some time before the, I the Internet of Payments becomes a, a reality. Okay, so bringing all this together, Stefan, what sort of a market do you and Juniper foresee going forward? Uh, in terms of a device space, uh, we foresee some 64 billion devices in, in 2023 having passed the 50 billion mark the year before. That's a lot of devices. At the end of this year, we're, we're looking at uh, just over 21 billion, I believe. Um, but the growth rates between the consumer market, industrial enterprise are going to be quite different. So we foresee, for example, industrial and enterprise devices growing on average 30% uh, in number, which is double the amount of the consumer device space. Really? Well, that's where the um, market is. And that's really driven a lot uh, by the fact that there are many low-cost devices that can be uh, um, put out into the field, like RFID, for example, is very low cost. Yeah, there's a lot of activity. Yeah. So, just turning to the report for a moment, uh, what's in the report and, uh, you know, why should I buy it? Well, overarchingly, it's a strategic report. So, we are looking at um, what is the market now and what will the, uh, what is the future outlook in terms of, um, as we mentioned, cybersecurity, um, automation and transaction event processing, um, how platforms are, are going to develop. Uh, we also have a key focus on, on segments themselves. So uh, for each se uh, segment within um, con consumer markets, enterprise and industrial markets, we will look at those sub-segments and say, what will be the impact of the IoT over the next five years? Um, what's the device uh, base going to be? What's the revenue opportunity? And, and these are quantified in, in forecasts? 
Absolutely, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you do any analysis on the players and that kind of? Uh... Yes, we we cover. Um, First of all, um, IoT as a whole, so we're covering uh, 12 vendors uh, from that perspective. But we're also offering uh, reports covering the platform side, so looking purely from a platform perspective, as well as a, uh, a cybersecurity perspective. So for each of those reports, we're covering 12 separate vendors, uh, looking at their activity, their strengths, their weaknesses, and, and really what their position is in the market versus others. Okay, fascinating. Thank you. If you would like further details of our research and our surveys, our consultancy services, then please get in touch. See you next time. Thank you.